Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Bernadette's Missionary Discipleship Family. Today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. We ask that you please silence your phone and prepare your heart to celebrate the sacred liturgy. We remember the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and give thanks for the Spirit's presence in our lives. Our celebrant this morning is Father Delphi. Everyone, please stand and join. Pentecost marks 
a fresh start for all of us. Jesus announces the peace, as we will learn that in today's gospel. Peace that comes with his victory over death. He gives us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit with the power of, to forgive and conquer sin. And like the apostles, we are strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Shall end. Especially to face the challenges of the world. And the Holy Spirit showers us with gifts. And let us use this for the building up of the church, the body of Christ. And so, my dear sisters and brothers, let us realize how much we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. And in how many ways we have become unworthy of His presence in us. And so, let us pause proud and ask the Lord for pardon. I do this for the mighty God,
O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church and every people and nation. For all we pray the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was forth when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us offer this mass for the soul of the young Baron and for the thanksgiving and special intentions of Zia Bhakti, AJ Desma, and Brian Claudio Bhakti. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord.
from the first letter from St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Please rise as we as we rise.
with you. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples went, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we are celebrating the feast of the Pentecost. Pentecost is the day where we commemorate the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Spirit that Christ promised them before His ascension back to His Father in heaven. You know, Pentecost comes from the word pente. What is the pente? The Greek word for 50. So Pentecost is 50 days after Jesus was resurrected from the dead during the Easter. You remember that Easter season, the resurrection of the Lord, when we celebrate from there to now is 50 days. That is why we celebrate the so-called Pentecost. And since Pentecost is coming to birth the church, you know, every time we celebrate the Pentecost, it is the birthday of the church. It is the birth of the church by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the church with its many diverse gifts that may it come to life. And let me first pick up from the second reading, a beautiful reading. The second reading, it says, There are many different kinds of spiritual gifts. Many kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. And different form of service, but the same Lord. Many different workings. But the same God who produces all of them. And then it continues, and towards the end, as a body is one, though it has many parts, though many are one body, so also Christ. Beautiful reading. Now, many but one. This is, these are the key ones. Maybe but one. You know, when we look around, we look around, we see clearly how different we are in many ways. That's why each one is unique. We are so different in so many ways. Different cultures. <laughs> Maybe when you go to, our, to the Philippines, you will be surprised, oh, this is the cultures. And not only the Philippines. We have, wherever we were before, wherever we come from, different cultures, different nationalities, race, status, work, color, talents, and personalities. So each is unique. 
Now, my question is, do we use our diversity or unique difference work to our advantage? That is, making us work together and united. Or do we allow this to divide us instead? When you look at our church and community, right now, when you look, you come here every Sunday, you meet different kinds of people, what is your personal assessment? You know, it's good when we see the church, what we are doing here, the different ministries, you know, the people. What is our assessment? It does not mean that coming to church together, we are already truly one in spirit. See, the Holy Spirit comes from the Latin word Spiritus. Spiritus, that is Holy Spirit, meaning breath. And breath is a sign of what? A sign of God. So when and where the Spirit breathes, there is life. That's why Jesus said in the Gospel, when He had said this, He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, so that they will have more life. They will live that love. So my dear sisters and brothers, even in the first wedding, it did not only come as gentle breath, but as a wind, right? As a wind. Thus, it was powerful to let to come to life the birth of the church. And taking from that, the Spirit breathes life to us by giving us the necessary gifts. The gifts sustain life of our church. And if we don't use the gifts, those gifts that we have received, what does our church become? You know, if we don't receive, or if we don't use the gifts that we have, okay, I'm just not giving just for myself. And here in the church, what will happen to our church? Lifeless. Dead church. A dead church does not have that people. That's why you sometimes you go to the different church and oh, I don't feel something and then you are like if there is a window shopping, some of us having this church shopping, I'm not church shopping. Just looking and something that they feel they are welcome. They feel that the spirit is there. The life of the church. It's so important. And that is what you are doing. That's why, my dear sisters and brothers, when you don't use the talents that God has given you, it's useless, it's lifeless. Just like the church, it becomes a dead church. And it will not attract people. They want something vibrant, full of life, not only by singing hallelujahs and the glories, gloria. Lord, huh? but by active participation in the mission of building a real church, the real church of faith that gives life to each of its members. Like here, our church, St. Bernadette's, when you ask of the people here, they will say, oh, I love St. Bernadette, like a family welcoming you know, as one. So that's why many people are coming because they feel welcome. They are, they are like one family. And that is the reason why our mission statement, you know, the church mission statement, again, when you get a copy of uh, the bulletin, read again this mission statement. This is not only the mission statement of the church, but it is our Mission statement. We, the missionary disciples of Jesus, are dedicated to building and serving an intercultural community. We are committed to 
share that joy. And joy is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Joy of the gospel. And celebrate the Eucharist. Welcoming all who seek Him. We strive to grow in faith as one family in Christ. Beautiful mission statement that what we need is to apply to make it alive. So my dear sisters and brothers, do you find us a vibrant community full of the fire inside? That fire coming from the Holy Spirit that makes us attractive to you? Or that you just come for the convenience this church provides? Like the ambulance and proximity to their place? Are we a Bible church enlivened or breathed? Breathed on by the, by the Spirit? And so many sisters and brothers, I encourage you to share the Spirit on others, especially us who have taken active roles in the church. Those who are taking active roles in the church, share the Spirit in you. Or you should not be like unwelcoming or not so pleasant attitudes. Or share also that blowing the Spirit so that the people will come to us. Everyone is given a gift to give and share for the life of the church. No one is created for nothing. So when the God created you, created us, He has something in mind. How uniquely you can give life to the church. Because remember, my dear sisters and brothers, you, you are a gift of God to the church. Here in St. Bernard's, you are it. And to our mother church, who continues to breathe in us the spirit of life, we thank her for teaching us to live in the spirit, to realize a fullness of life in Christ. So let us pray that the spirit will continue to guide us, to comfort us, to teach us, and protect us as we join into the house of the Father. Amen. Please rise as we confess our Father. I believe one more.
May God keep him in health of mind and body, that he may continue to bear witness to the faith of Peter, on which Christ built his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all baptized and confirmed Christians, may they be lovers of God and people of the way, bearing witness to the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Prevent to violence, wars, and exploitation of the Earth's resources. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Prevent to racism in our country, for courageous leaders who will condemn it, and for citizens who no longer tolerate it. May our nation be open to reconciliation and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick and suffering, and those who are living terminal illnesses, May the, may the power of the Holy Spirit give restraint of body and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those family and friends that have gone before us, especially Lillian Moreno, for whom this Mass is offered, may they rest in peace of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord God of God and God, her disciples were raised today. Moved by the power of the Spirit, answer that according to your will, not ours. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
in a similar way when supper was coming. He took the chalice in one's work in advance. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and free from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mr. of Faith.
Behold, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are the suffering of the Lord.
Let us pray. O oh God, who bestowed heavenly gifts upon your church, Saint God, we pray in the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her, may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel. Yes. The Diocese of Catholic Social Teachings Lives. This weekend marks the anniversary of George Floyd's death at the hands of Minneapolis Police on May 28, 2020. His death ignited massive civil rights protests in America and around the globe and galvanized people worldwide to protest racism and discrimination. Archbishop Jose H. Gomez of Los Angeles, and the President of the U.S. Conference of the Catholic Bishops, the USAC, provided the following statement. We should not let it be said that George Floyd died for no reason. We should honor the sacrifice of his life by removing racism and hate from our hearts and renewing our commitment to fulfill our nation's sacred promise to be a beloved community of life, liberty, and equality for all. Pope Francis reminds us of the need to continue to decry the intrinsic evil of racism by stating instances of racism continue to shame us for they show that our supposed social progress is not as real or definitive as we think. Blessings. Deacon Michael Walker, the Yosisan Catholic Social Teachings Lives. May crowning taking place on Wednesday, May 31st at 5 p.m. Please bring your own garden flowers to offer to our Blessed Mother. Refreshments to follow. The Ladies Guild will be hosting their annual rummage sale on Friday, June 2nd from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. and on Saturday, June 3rd from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Everyone is invited to Father Delphine's 20th ordination anniversary celebration on Saturday. June 17th. We will start with Mass at 5.30 p.m., followed by a complimentary dinner, potluck style. Everyone is welcome, so RSVP in the office. Hope to see you there. We invite all of those that graduated this year to come and receive a special blessing from Father at all Masses as they move forward on the next chapter in their lives. Next week, a Knight of Columbus insurance agent will be here to tell us more about their insurance. Knights of Columbus insurance has been protecting its members' families since 1882 with an A-plus rating for profit life insurance programs. Now, these affordable benefits are available to every practical Catholic man and his family. Please rise for the final blessing. 
the Lord with you. Our hands and pray for God's blessing and let your response be. May God the Father of light, who has pleased to enlighten the, dis the disciples' hearts, may the outpouring of the Spirit and courage grant your gladness by His blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit, now and forever. Amen. May the Holy Spirit that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every ill and pervade them with its purifying life, now and forever. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give your perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you join from hope to clear vision, now and forever. Amen. And the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our mass has been covered, led by the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy feast day of the Pentecost to all of you. And a blessed Sunday.